Welcome to this latest climate update. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. It's been a few weeks since we provided an update for you. A lot has changed. All right, last time we checked in, we took a look at precipitation and January and February was very dry. In fact, most of Central and Southern California were less than 25% of average, making them top five driest. Here are some of the numbers that we looked at. Precipitation was, in some locations, the second driest on record combined between January and February. Now, over the past 30 days, and especially the past two weeks, it's been very wet in Southern California. A lot like what we saw in December, precipitation has been even more widespread and heavy most locations are looking at 400 to 500% of average in the past 30 days. Those are those shaded areas you see in the purple in Southwest California. Most of that precipitation has come just in the past couple weeks. Significant turnaround since February. How are we doing so far for the water year? Well, you can see across Southern California, we have made up for most of the deficits we've had. And that means the green shaded area is now 100% of average. We even have areas in Northwest San Diego County, which are now one and a half to two times their annual average precipitation. And that is the case also when you go out into the desert region as shaded in purple. Northern California, it's been a different story, a story of dry conditions and Northwest California remains below 50% of its annual or water year precipitation. All right, here are some numbers for you. Now, what I did is I left some of the numbers through February so that you could see the dramatic jump from March and April. Take a look at San Diego. We were at eight and a half inches at the end of February. Now we're almost 13 and a half inches of precipitation and we've exceeded our annual water year total, which averages 10.33. So our departure from average is almost four inches. Other locations even more impressive, such as Vista, they are now sitting at 21.91 and that is over nine inches above the average to date. You can see they've almost doubled their annual average. That's why we're seeing those purple shaded areas in Southern California. Now our mountain locations in February were not doing well. Very little precipitation, top three driest occurred in January and February for our mountain locations. However, since March and into April, those locations have also doubled. Look at Palomar Mountain going from 12 inches at the end of February to now 29 inches and they are at their seasonal average, so they're guaranteed an average winter season or water year total in their area as they are running four inches above average. Quite remarkable turnaround in extremes this winter. Now, let's also take a look at the Sierra Nevada, important source of precipitation during the water year. The precipitation there has also increased over the past 30 days, and they're now up to 59% of average still well below where they should be and still running close to some of the recent dry years, unfortunately. Now the snowpack has also improved. You can see the blue line here, the snowpack. It should be at its peak around April 1st and the snowpack is sitting a little bit above 55% of average. So not great, um, but there has been some improvement, but it still remains considerably well below the average for this time of year. All right, what's been going on? When we started off the beginning of the water year or the beginning of the winter, the dominant upper level high pressure was driving storms into Southern California. A couple of those storms merged with tropical moisture and we had big rain in late November and also in late December from a couple of those storms right around the holidays. Now, after that, January and February, it pretty much shut off. The upper level high pressure spread out and was even more dominant even on the West Coast, pushing all the storms to our north as shown here. 
we ended up having a record dry January and February. Again, most locations were 2-3 in rank for driest January-February combined. Then it all changed again in March. The upper level high pressure nudged further north into Alaska, now tapping into cold air from central Canada and driving storms into Southern California as shown here. This is an average of the storm track from March 1st through April 13th. Not just one particular storm, this is the actual storm track observed. Very amplified weather pattern driving the storms right into Southern California. Can we blame or attribute any of this to El Nino or La Nina? Well, across the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, we continue to see slightly above average temperatures, but no El Nino. We continue to call it neutral conditions so that we really cannot attribute this extreme weather pattern to anything going on down in the tropics. How did we do? The October prediction is shown here. This was for the winter months, December through February. And the reason being is that is the core winter months where we see the majority of precipitation. In fact, January and February are the wettest months on average in California. So the forecast was calling for drier than normal conditions for most of Northern and Central California and about average for Southern California with a split in the jet stream as shown here. Well, what happened December through February? Very dry conditions in Northern California. So that worked out perfect. Now, when you went into Southern California, we were wet in December, but again, we were top five driest for January and February. So we ended up being dry down here. So we were basically right on the edge of average to dry, but overall on the dry side for Southern California. So the forecast for the core of the winter months, December through February, actually worked out pretty good for California, indicating Northern California being much drier than average and Southern California being near the edge or slightly drier than average, which occurred. How about for the latter part of the winter into the spring, February through April? How did we do? Well, here's a forecast that was issued in mid-January, showing drier than average conditions continuing for Northern and Central California, but also occurring in Southern California and the desert Southwest. How'd we do? Well, as you can see on this map here, we did not do well in the Southwest. Those areas like I showed earlier, including Southern California and Arizona and Southern Nevada are in the purple shade, which is over 200% of average or two to three times as much rain as they should have for that period from February into April. Now, of course, we're not done in April, so we might get additional precipitation on top of that as well. The northwest part of California, however, continues to be dry, so the forecast was very good for that part of California. What is the outlook now for late April into May? Well, for temperature, it looks like we're going to be on the edge and be right around average across most of California to a little bit above average. The storm track looks like it will retreat a little bit and go more across the Pacific Northwest into Idaho and Montana, where the wetter and cooler conditions are expected up there. So it does look like, however, that we do have an opportunity for at least some precipitation here in Southern California from a couple storms in late April. So we're not showing our area to be below average, the normal precipitation is not very much, keep in mind though, for late April and early May. Typically, we're starting to dry out significantly. All right, here are the highlights. We had 14 Santa Ana wind events this winter. And most of those occurred in January, February, and of course, back in the fall, October, November. We had some really intense storms, uh, high winds in February and also in late January. Now we had six precipitation events early on in the year with impacts. The two main ones were November 28th and December 26th. And those even had weak atmospheric rivers associated with them. Then we got into January and February and it was top five driest everywhere. Some of the locations were two to three in the ranking for dryness. Now, when we got into March, it all turned around again. March and early April, 
we were 400 to 800 percent of average. We doubled the water year amounts once we get into March and early April. Very remarkable. The dominant upper level high pressure in the North Pacific, the driving me mechanism for our storm track remained in place. And we continued to see those storms, especially in mid-March to mid-April, diving across Southern California. We can't not attribute this to any El Nino or conditions in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, however. We continue to see some merging of tropical moisture. And in fact, we had a rare atmospheric river in Southern California on April 6. Now, overall, the December to February forecast was good. It called for drier conditions across Central and Northern California and about average for Southern California. However, it was very poor for February to April, which has turned out to be the game changer March and April precipitation being 400 plus percent of average above what we normally could see during that time period. You can check latest forecast information and climate updates at the Climate Prediction Center and the website is shown here. Thanks for tuning in and taking a look at this remarkable water year season so far.